So something I wanted to talk about today is, you know, approaches on on when you're you're pitching the ball and and you know just kind of techniques behind that and and stuff. You know. Yeah, I mean, I went to college for baseball. Are you talking about baseball? Or uh, I'm, I'm talking about like pitch shots. Yeah. Right, right. Because no, this is not, a golfing show. Yeah, right, not, not cool. baseball. Cool. Yeah, All right, yeah. cool. I'll just I'll head out. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, I was like, wow, TJ's TJ's got a 96 mile an hour two seamer <laughs> that I don't know about. <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay. So pitching, uh, so pitching approach shots, like mentality wise or like, yeah, how you go about them and, you know, distance control and, and what you, you kind of use to, to dial in that yardage, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I love, I'm very adamant about my like short game. I think that, I think we both have a pretty decent short game for not being yeah. pro golfers. Uh, but yeah, mentality wise, it's it's all about feel for me. I know that it's more of like keeping a tempo instead of like and just trying to like not overdo it. Uh that's the finesse and the and the artistic part of golf, right? Yeah, yeah, is yeah. letting kind of the equipment and the and the uh form do the work. But yeah, my my thing is I always I'm a big advocate for uh I like to play it short and let it ro- ro- roll up. Or if it's raining, I try to like loft it higher and just stick it. That's like yeah, really yeah. my the only things that go through my mind with that. Um, yeah. So something that I do um, as the season kind of gets started, start to get the wedges dialed and, and get numbers in my head a bit more. Um, but certainly, you know, like May June, I, I start to get my numbers for my different wedges, um, and I really think of it just like a clock face. This is something that I, I talk with my buddy Sam O'Barish about, uh, which we're gonna have Sam on at some point for an interview. Yeah. Um, but just thinking you know half swing three quarter swing mm-hmm. on on each of my wedges and knowing their yardage range that they go um and it kind of varies season to season but you start to get in your head you know 60 yards out you know i can either take a, a half swing of my pitch wedge or take a three quarter of my 52 and i i kind of bounce between those and, and trying to not take those full swings yeah no, I like um, that. Because I kind of have a very unique wedge setup. I guess a lot of people leave like four degrees between their wedges, but mm-hmm. I actually I have a 52, a 58, and then that 64 that yeah. is just kind of like wide yeah. open. Yeah. Uh, but I like those bigger gaps because then it allows me to to take a half swing with each and have good gaps with those numbers. Uh, yeah. I mean, you're comfortable enough with them, you know, so it's like... Yeah. Again, we've talked about it before. I mean, there's no... But for the longest time, I mean, I was chipping with like a nine iron yeah because i lost my pitching wedge but it was like i could get it to do it 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 actually kind of like i think it worked out in my benefit kind of like you with your wedges where instead of like having that you have that like kind of vast gap in degrees but you've learned how to utilize them and how to you know take fuller swings or quarter swings yeah i think that's a an interesting thing you know a lot of golf teachers talk about that you know limiting your bag and taking you know like three irons out and like okay you're gonna play nine holes and adapt Mm -hmm. hitting these clubs and making them work with big gaps absolutely um and and it's the thing where like i mean my 64 degree it's you know i lay that thing open and hit little flop shots but i never take full swings with it it's really just using the the catching something clean with that is so difficult to do that i just always i'm either taking you know quarter swing half swing full swing and you know and i'm just thinking that like 733 yeah and kind of knowing the yardage I can do from there. And then, you know, I need a little less opening it up or choke down a little bit mm-hmm. and uh, bounce between those, those three wedges. Oh yeah. That's my big focus this year is my wedge game. I never can, I don't understand. My brain just doesn't understand how to hit them for distance. Like, you know, like a short par three, I'm just taking like a pitching wedge or I'm taking like an approach wedge and just like, like a half swing. I just can't yeah, yeah. hit wedges, but Flop game's okay. I want to get better at that too, but yeah, maybe that's we can do. Uh, what is it? The um, like the good good labs. We can do the <laughs> yeah, basic yeah. bogey, basic bogey practice. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not saying my my technique's not all right, but I I feel pretty confident. No, it's good. It's hitting good. those, you know, I've just kind of learned that that's the most important part of my game is yeah. from. If I'm 150 plus yards out. Obviously, I'm trying to hit the green. It's not going to happen every time. But sure. if I'm 75 yards out, you know, most likely if I'm 75 yards out, there's a couple of scenarios. Either it's a short par four mm-hmm. and I'm hitting two, trying to give myself a birdie look. Mm-hmm. 
it's a long par five and I'm trying to hit three, trying mm -hmm. to, again, get myself a birdie look. Or I got myself into trouble and I'm scrambling now and yeah. I'm giving myself a par look. But knowing from that yard, say it's 75 yards, I need to get it up and down to save bogey. Yeah. And then in my head, if I can put something at 15 feet from 75 yards and in, yeah, can guarantee to get it up and down within two and either making par if it's a you know, if I'm in position right. or saving bogey and, and just eliminating those big numbers. Yeah. I mean, in, in all those scenarios, I think the underlining thing is like just having the confidence to know that, all right, I just want to get this within like 20 feet. Just give yeah. myself a shot to have a putt at it. Trusting those wet shots, I think, is is key. Once yeah. you, you have it in your head, you know, this is how far I'm bringing it back to and following through the same distance. You know, if you're thinking clock, like I, I always think face of the clock. Mm -hmm. um, but then just committing and not... I mean, the biggest mistake from amateur golfers is deselling into the <clears> ball and then mm -hmm. trying to know, like place it. Rather, that's than where you start. It, you know, it. you either thin it or you chunk it, and now you're either long or short. And just trusting those uh, where your your setup is. It's the way of the road. Yeah, it sure is. But yeah, I, I mean, I think uh, we talked before. I'm I wanted to get new wedges last year, didn't end up pulling the trigger. Yeah, that's my goal. Uh, like probably by like my birthday's in May. I'm probably gonna do it right in May. Yeah. Yeah. You you gonna go and get like fitted for them? You're just gonna grab a. I'm probably gonna lean on you for that. You might have. I've never I've never gotten fitted for clubs, so I might. Have I to... had never been fitted, and then I went to the they had the Callaway rep at right. Winoa last year, and that's when I went to get fitted for wedges. Then was the plan, mm. and have it. I mean, I think, I think wedges, is more important fitting than like a driver is because you have that rep that knows. There's so many variables with the yeah. wedges, from the bounce to the yeah. lie to the degree of the wedge itself, the loft. And it's like that's where I think the rep is even more important because those are your scoring clubs. Absolutely. And getting that feedback from him mm -hmm. then, I didn't end up pulling the trigger because he was giving me other feedback that was really good where like I realized I was standing way too close to the ball. And then mm -hmm. it, I went through some kind of major swing adjustments. You did. In that mm -hmm. point, uh, it was probably like July-ish. Yeah. And it, I mean, my swing's even... I was making it work, but I was doing incorrect things with my swing. And I never having taken any actual lessons. Right. You know, I didn't I just did what worked and got by. Um, but I think working through those changes was beneficial. Yeah. And so now it's, you know, I want to go and do a fitting again, but it's like I don't want to do a fitting in like April. You know, I want to get into yeah. the routine a little bit and then do a fitting in the summer. Yeah. And then Thanks for watching today's episode. To see more of our content, be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe on YouTube. We can be found at Basic Bogies on all platforms. Thanks. We hope to see you on the next one.